up on my workbench tonight I have a Denon compact disc player. This is just a basic single disc CD player. It's a DCD815 and I don't know what's wrong with this thing and whether it may even work. Let's take the top off and just take a look at the build of this unit. Taking the top of this unit, I'd say right off the bat this looks an awful lot like a Sony inside, you know. This looks an awful lot like a Sony. Check out the chip here. Okay, it's got a, just a, the main audio processor here. It's a Sony CXA. I think it's 1872, 1872, or is it a 13? Hard to tell from this angle. 1872, I guess. 1872S. That's uh, the main chip on this thing here. And I bet you yeah, this thing's got a Sony optical pickup. Let's take a look. Yep, for sure, it's Sony. KSS uh, 240A, that's a standard uh, Sony optical pickup that was used on literally dozens of Sony's machines. This was one of the most, if not the most, common uh, CD pickup. This is the same one that was used on all the multi-disc, the five-disc changers. Probably my 200-disc changers got the same one. Very, very common, very standard pickup. Uh, pretty reliable one. It's, a, it's what they call a three-beam or three-spot pickup. So you have your main beam that is focused on your your uh, four detector diodes, and then there's two side spots for tracking. So this is what they called the three the three beam uh, laser pickup. Not sure what to expect here. Let's try my damaged defect disc. This is a disc that I've got that actually has a crack in it, right there. We'll see how it handles this CDR with a crack and see if it'll play it. This is kind of the acid test because uh, uh, it'll play this. Oh, well, you already see we got a problem here. When I opened it, it closed right away. So we have a switch problem. Let's take a look and see what's wrong. It's going to be one of the detection switches that detects when the uh, uh, cassette, or the sorry, not the cassette, when the CD tray is out. Right, it's going right back in. We'll probably find there's a little switch on here that is uh, not uh, being read correctly. Let's just uh, pop the mechanism out and take a look and see what's going on. So to do that first we're going to want to remove the uh, end piece from the tray here. To do that you should be able to just pull in the center and lift up. And now we should be able to lift the uh, tray assembly out once we close it. Be four screws, one, two, three, and four. We should be able to lift this whole assembly out. So we're going to want to unplug the uh, flat ribbon cable here and the motor plug and this other green plug here, which is got the switches and so forth on it, so that we can remove the chassis and reveal that there'll be a set of switches right here on this board here. This is the switch that detects whether the unit is in or out. And to, to access that switch we're just going to um, we're just going to release the catches here. We want to do this though with the unit not in its fully closed position. Uh, the reason for that is because this, there's going to be a leaf switch that's pushed one way or the other. We want the, the mechanism in the neutral position when we put this thing back together, but we can remove this by just releasing these catches. And the switch will drop down. You see what I mean? This is a, this is the switch that's going to be causing us problems. What the switch does is when the, tr when the tray is fully open, it's one direction. When the tray is fully closed, it's the other. It's just like a rotary encoder on a uh, VCR, and these switches, they get dirty. And they don't signal on the microprocessor that the uh, disc tray is fully open or fully closed and you get that the disc comes out and it goes right back in. So we're going to clean the switch up and then I just have to um, remove the mechanism slightly so I can have the tray midway in or out uh, so that this is going to be in its neutral position when we put this little circuit board back into place. Now the easiest way to get this mechanism to move is just use your screwdriver into this little gear down here and just turn this little gear counterclockwise or you can actually just move this mechanism by hand down here there's a slider here. If you move this slider over a bit, that'll drop down the optical block and then you're able to pull this open. And as you, if you look down here, you'll see what I'm talking about. Right, you'll see the slide plate. 
slide plate down here, it'll, when, it, when it reaches fully open, that slide plate moves. That's what signals that the tray is fully open. So what we're going to do is we're just going to clean this switch with some contact cleaner and uh, put it back together. And that should fix this unit. So to clean this switch, just get in there with your contact cleaner such as Neutral, which is what I'm using, and just give it a little shot. Enough to get right into the switch and work it back and forth a bit to uh, try to polish up the contacts a little. I know a few people have been critical that I don't wear gloves when I'm using this stuff. Well, <clears throat> this stuff here is not really toxic. The newer stuff. The older Neutral, and I do have a can of the older stuff, and it had the big danger poison on it. Um, this stuff here is uh, not really that bad because uh, after all it's registered with the Canadian Food Inspection Agency for use in food plants right so obviously you don't spray it on food but it's it's used in machinery that processes food so it's um, not really all that harmful it's not uh, it doesn't have anything super harmful it doesn't have any carcinogens in it it's got some oil in it it uh, smells like diesel actually, but it's got some oil in it and some alcohols. It's, a, it's an alcohol based cleaner. The old Neutral, which I have a can of old Neutral that's probably 30 years old, was actually a much better cleaner, but um, it, uh, it's not uh, it's a little more harmful, I think, but it's, it's better. But uh, I'm not using that though. When I run out of this, I will. I promise. I'll go back to using the old, the old stuff. Snap that back in place, root the wires down where they belong, and let's mount this unit back in this uh, chassis and see what happens. So to mount it, we just lift it up. You notice I'm being careful not to touch any connectors or anything. Yes, I know I'm on a carpet bench here, but I'm also not touching anything that uh, can pass static electricity to the laser pickup or anything. We're going to ground ourselves out by touching the chassis here, make sure that I'm at ground potential. I'll drop the unit back in place. While I'm still grounding myself out, now I can touch these wires without having fear of causing a static electrostatic discharge. And I am grounded out, I will point that out because my audio cables are connected to my sound system which is connected to my earth ground. So this chassis is at earth potential now. The AC power though is disconnected. If we want to get a look at the laser pickup and see if, the, if, it's, uh, if it's dusty, I can just turn the little gear down here. I'll show you. Move the camera over so you can see it. I can just turn the gear here by hand and that'll pull the laser assembly out. And now I can get a look at the laser lens. Looking at that, that laser looks to be relatively clean. I don't see any dust on there or any dirt. We'll power the unit up. The laser should retract back to its home position once I power the unit up now we'll put a disc in it it doesn't like my cracked disc Let's see if it will play. Looks like it's working. Let's let this thing play for a bit. 
that crack in the disc was giving it some trouble reading the table of contents, but it did manage to read it. Let's let this thing play and just see how well it plays. And there may be nothing wrong with this thing other than that little switch was uh, dirty. So we'll let this thing play here for a bit and I won't play the sound over YouTube because, well, I don't need to have any headaches from uh, the copyright board. This was recorded off of a record, you can hear the scratches on it. fixed as you can hear it's working perfect we get the top back on this thing and uh, move on to the next one as you can see my disc tray is working correctly now thanks for watching and we'll uh, definitely catch you in the next one